Hello, Calvin Jones here with Park Tool Company. Today's February 14th. We all know what special day that is. Yes, fixing bikes on Tech Tuesday. That's the day. Enough of this hard stuff. Get it out of here, Ben. We're taking bike parts, bits of steel, fixing them with tools. That's what today's about. We're going to be looking at a very center part of the bike. What do we got today, Ben? Uh, we're going to do some hub rebuilding. Hub rebuilding. Yeah. OK. So what is the hub? It's the center of our wheel. Uh, we, we are going to uh, fix this because we think there might be problems. Plus, it's just kind of fun. Yeah. So yeah. Routine maintenance is right. a good way to keep your bike going. So again, the hub, the hub is in the center. Before we look at the problem that we have here, possible problem, uh, there's different types of hubs. Um, some can be overhauled, some can't. So we say overhaul, it's cleaning, greasing, and adjusting. This is called a cartridge bearing hub. It's a different style of hub. We will see this on another day. Uh, this is in the through axle family, although you do see them in the traditional open dropout family. Mm -hmm. Another day for you. Get out of here. What do we have here? So this is our standard uh Cup and cone, loose ball, uh, regular threaded axle, quick release hub. Uh, right. Similar to what we'll be looking at today, uh, but not exactly the same. So right, right. So, in concept, very much the same. This, another day, get out of here. So, what are we looking at today, Calvin? We've got a, uh, the through axle. Well, what's the through axle? We see a bike here. We have the dropout here. Now, it's completely enclosed. An axle passes all the way through one side to the other through our, our hub. That's going to be how it's, it's connected. So the open dropout, much like a V, wheel passes straight out. So this is an adjustable called cup and cone ball bearing system. So we have, we have two. There's actually the same model. Same hub. A nice, beautiful, clean one where everything is fine and then a real life. My wheel, my wheel that's been neglected for years. <sighs> we know uh, it's trash. Yeah, it, it, could be, it could be a disaster in here, so we'll, right. we'll open it up and find out. So uh, the, before we get to the procedure, let's go ahead and prop that thing up and talk a little bit, but what, why would you even bother doing this? Why would we want to do this? Uh, there could be a number of reasons. You know, it's always good to clean and re-grease uh, the parts on your bike. Cables, hubs, mm -hmm. chains, they're all consumable parts, uh, especially bearings. So uh, that's one reason. Also, any, any weirdness that you might feel, uh, mm -hmm. play in the wheel, that sort of thing, it's all an indication that you need to kind of have a look inside and see what's that's, going that's on. That's right. So. We're going to get more and more and more life. Okay. He's fast now. He may go faster after we're done, but definitely after we're done, it's going to be longer and longer life for that, yeah. that hub. Good for yep. the pocketbook and just plain old fun. So let's, let's get going here. We have some preliminary work to do. Let's take, uh, take some things out of our way. Okay. So the rotor's in the way. We have a lock ring here, so. So we use uh, the uh, FR. FR5 CT. Yes. And uh, I'm going to break that loose. Now, my... were you, you were really strong <laughs> yeah. there. Did you... This was not pre loosened, Calvin. Uh, this is all, yeah. all me. Okay. All me. Okay. Well, we, to speed things along, we have, we have pre baked some of the parts. So here's our, our rotor. Let's Rotor's get that gone. out of the way. Flip that around. Next, the cassette. The, cart, the cassette system has to come off. So yep. here's a chain whip I'm grabbing with my whip. flesh, and we're going to. Again, the FR5. Yeah, the, G, the guide, guide uh, GT version. Off. Off. Excellent. Excellent. Right. So those are out of the way. So we have our hub. Mm -hmm. Pop that baby up here. Let's, before we move on here, we're going to audience, viewing audience here, we want you to grab. You're going to reach in here with your virtual hand. We're going to turn that slow and, and feel Mm, something is it's a little uh, well, a little, not little rot, Well, it, it's Shakespeare would be rotten in Denmark. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> this is gritty. This is not. A, it's a catch, catch. I, uh, you see, what do you think there? It does feel a little rough. Yeah. Uh, so th we were doing this at just the right time. Right, I think it's right. A, and hopefully we're not too late, audience. Yeah, hopefully yeah. we're not. We're gonna have tears, tears. Here's a little trick there for our our shop guys. 
you can determine sometimes which side, if I take this up and I, I push hard here and I turn, turn, turn and get a sense of what I'm feeling here, if I flip it and I push here, it's different because I'm loading this a little more right. than I'm loading the other side. And, and sometimes one side's good, yeah. uh, sometimes one side's what, what bad. What do you feel on this in this instance, Calvin? Does it feel I'm thinking, worse on one side? I'm thinking this side's a little worse. Uh -oh. But how do you find out? What's the one way to find out? You gotta take it apart. Take Let's it apart do it. Get your Let's eyes do on it. it. All right. So again, we have uh, an axle here and the hub. So we're gonna get on inside here. Let's get a couple of tools here, our SCW, our cone wrenches. Now, because he's gonna get on that, we can see on our bike, there's, we're gonna call this a fixed side. This is the side that we disassembled from. Which is the non-drive side. The non-drive side. Before we yeah, get, get your wrench in there real quick, but I want to pick up. If we look at this side, there's one wrench flat, but not a second front wrench flat to work with. So we're going to disassemble from the side with two, two flats. Two yeah. flats. Right. So here we go. So it's going to go counterclockwise in this case. We're rearranging for mechanical right. advantage. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now, a little, a little. Um, before we take that off a second, Ben, okay. did you bring your cell phone? I uh, did. Yeah. Okay. So, what we recommend to our audience there, a little trick we can do: you take out your phone, take, take a up photo. like a little photo. So you make your own little, little uh, journal as you go through. Yeah. So as you're coming together. How did that go? Yep, you can know how to re reassemble when right. the time comes. Right, so yep. we'll put us out on the OM1 overhaul mat. Okay. I like to put them in the in the order they come off. So, you know, we move from left to right, right very, to left. Very, very professional. So. Yes. <laughs> oh, that one's not coming loose by itself. All right, so here we, we're holding on this side and loosening the tether. Oh, and we should also say as we go through here, we'll have some time to uh, stop for some questions and uh, answer answer some questions. Uh, we'll take the relevant ones and then and then more questions at, at the at the end. So here we go, coming off, and that's going to go down on our overhaul mat. And this is the cone. We're talking about a cone, cup and cone. This is the cone shape that's coming off right there. So a little bit dirty, we'll, we'll get to that. Now there's more, more fun to come. Oh, here we go. There's the, the business All right. end. This is the axle and another cone built in, okay? So we're gonna have to do a little cleaning on, on there. We'll get to that in a second. But I think we still have some more fun over here. We got some bearings. Uh, we got a dust seal uh, out on the front of the hub and bearings behind. Right, so these bearings, if I wiggle them back and forth here, we see these bearings wiggle back and forth. These are actually in a little pl uh, plastic retaining ring, right? So they're not, they're not falling down. So this seal is gonna have to come out of the way if we can. Yeah, and so. Shimano hubs usually do have a, a dust seal pressed in there, uh, well known for their, you know, inability to withstand removal. So, yes. uh, you know, be very careful when you're pulling your dust seals out. Calvin, you have a tool for your Yeah, dust we have, a, have, have a variety here. So okay. this is this is probably one of the number one uh, dust cap killers. Yeah. It's a sharp <laughs> pen, so we're showing you the, uh, the, 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 the weapon, the murder weapon, so away with you. Well, that's a thin one. Oh yeah, it slips in really nice, but it's a very, very narrow, putting a lot of load a on a small space. Small yeah. space. So okay. we're gonna try and get, uh, See if I can get a little bit wider in here. Whoa. Oh, look at oh, that. You're catching a little, a little more. Gentle, gentle around. You're like a surgeon, Calvin. There we go. There we go. Look at that. Ah, nice, nice. Now, be careful here. You know, if we had that phone, click, click. Is it this way or is it that way? This, well, that's what the cell phone's put the, for. Put the dirt side out. That's dirt, what I dirt always say. Side. And you can see here the, the ring, so that, that's, that's how we are here. And what's nice here about this system, this labyrinth, you can see this, this edge here and that lip there, that's a, that helps keep out stuff yeah. from, from inside. So we'll put that over here in, in order. 
And then we got our magnet, get our, our magnet there, Ben, and here comes the, we're gonna, ah, oh, you come, there you are, ball bearings. Bearing retainer. Nice. We're gonna put that down over here. Let's flip that, flip that hub. And this one, if we can look inside here, we're gonna see, whoa, look at that, the babies wanna come right out. Give us some action in there. Here they come. Okay, just oh. loose balls on the drive side. Loose ball bearings all on the drive side. So here's another very important thing we're gonna do, Ben. So out in the audience there, are you ready? We're gonna try this together, ready? One, two, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Right, 14 out, 14 in. Okay, Let's remember there we that. go, there we go. So here, ooh, this is the, these, these dust caps are even trickier. So let's get a good, a good shot in here. Uh, let's see if we can fit here. Yeah, I might give this one a go. If there's much force here, if there's much force, uh, I'm just going to leave it and clean inside. Okay. So I'm going to gently, very gently. Okay, that, that was gentle, so I'm going to just keep working. But again, easily damaged, easily damaged, and if they're tweaked, um, you're not doing anybody in, any good. Yep. So, all right, let's put that over, over here. So, so what do we see on these parts? How do they look? You know, a lot of times when you have some damage, you can actually see yes. uh, pitting on the cone, on the metal, uh, any sort of... He's right. So mm. we're gonna do a little cleaning here. We got some solvent, some degreasing solvent. I'm gonna put on a little glove action here. And you've got the... The hub. I'll tell you what, why don't you wipe down that? All right. And I'll start wiping down these and we'll talk about what each of us each of us finds. So yeah, you 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 do that and I'll do this here. So here's here's the cone here. Uh, this is the removable cone. So we got a couple of brushes. We're gonna get in here and clean. This is a wet solvent. It's not just cleaning, it's going to be drying. We don't want to start greasing without getting it dry. Okay, I have to clean that up. Just want to get the grit out of there. And this one's especially important here. We're going to... Okay, we'll wipe that down. Oh, this is fun. Did we lose, we lost a bearing already. It looks like there's a loss. Oh boy. I'm gonna have to be careful here. I'm gonna go with a finer brush. Okay, yes, you may recognize this. It is a toothbrush. <laughs> Not just for Our dentist teeth. will tell you once the bristles start to fold over, it's time for a new toothbrush, but we never want to waste anything. The suspense is killing me, Calvin. Our, 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 uh, our, oh, is my just, just make we're, it? we're building is this gonna up. Make well, it? We're going to look for his pits, and if, if there's, uh, there's pits here, Ben's going to be awfully bummed. So yeah. let's just go ahead and, and have a look here. We'll start with this one. Yeah, our audience, the few. I, he, Ben's just all over this. Here. Right, Let's give his our audience a good look here. Boy, that's actually looking pretty darn good, audience. What are you seeing out there? Anybody seeing some pits? I was, I was hoping. I mean, I thought there might have been some. And here is another old trick to trace the ball path with a pin. You're gonna trace where the, the ball bearings roll, and if there's bumps or roughness, much like a, a chuck hole in the road, right? The road of life, right? If there's a driving your car, the wheels are the ball bearings, and if they come across a, a pit, it's gonna make a rough ride. 
I don't feel any pits here. Okay, so that's that's a good sign. Oh, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. Is that the only sign that we have? Or well, I what mean, do we have over here? So this inside the hub, you can see this is the cup or the surface that the bearings, uh, you know, set in, and it's the other half of uh, the cup and cone system. Mm -hmm. So uh, tracing this, everything feels pretty good on the drive side. Flip it over and. Have a look on the non-drive side. Everything looks good. So the Shoot. surfaces are smooth. <laughs> Says you, Callan. I'm I'm happy that my wheel is uh, not destroyed. So what that what was that roughness that we felt? If if everything looks good but it was a little rough, what was what's going on? What would you diagnose that? Most as? likely right here. I don't know if we can see. Down there, you can see the grit, a little bit of grit, just the grit. And I'm going to say it was possibly over tight. Okay, so it a little maladjusted. A little mal maladjustment. But we have one more cone. With any luck, we're going to have badness here. <laughs> okay. So let's have a look right here. Where's our little, uh, there you go. So here, this is a cone. And um, yeah, it is the other half, the cup and cone, but it's really the other third. Where's the, the ball bearing in between the cup and the cone? So, boy, yeah, that one, it's looking, it's looking pretty darn good. So this will be interesting if we can do a better, better adjustment than, yeah, that, that feels, uh, there's nothing here. No pitting, no tut, 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 you'll feel roughness. Uh, we don't, we don't have that here, so. Ben is happy for his ride this weekend. I am. So another thing that uh, we don't have uh, right at hand is an air compressor, a little clean action. Yes. So I think we're ready to reassemble. That looks that looks good there. Now let's let's do take a look. Nothing nothing up our sleeve, right? We don't see anything in there. I am kind of wondering about that ball there. That missing ball bearing. Well, luckily we have we have extras. We have, we have extra just in case, because <laughs> we knew we'd need them. We were fairly careful there, so we I do want to check out <laughs> our whole bench the here. Source of the roughness. Here you go. Yeah. There's a new one. Okay. Okay. I think that's good. Now, uh, let's continue a little bit. Flip this back over here. Now, one thing we're going to skip, audience, and I know, no, you're not going to like. You see all this, this dirt in here. Oh, look at all that. Oh, should we clean all that out? Let's. Well, we can. I we mean, should. We should. But we're not. Part of. Okay. The, part of. So the yes, uh, we're trying to get you through your uh, your lunch break, uh, but we would want to get all that that grit all on the inside, make a nice looking hub. Understood. But today we're going to move move forward. We do want to talk about. Free hub. The free hub itself. So the ratcheting mechanisms are, are, are inside there. This unit can come off. Now notice we wiped inside of there. We didn't take a lot of solvent and scrub because mm -hmm. getting solvent down well, between the outer cylinder and that inner bearing, we can see right here, solvent dripping down there. It's going to get into the bearings mm -hmm. and we, uh, we don't we don't want to see solvent dripping right through here, down inside. Don't, we don't want that. Uh, you're going to flush the grease out of there. You can replace that. This is the free, this is what it looks like here. It's a large 15 millimeter goes inside and we turn it counterclockwise and these can be on tight. Yeah. That's about a 40 Newton meter, right, which Quick math. Cheat. What is it? <laughs> when in doubt, we're going to cheat. 40 Newton meter, 350 inch pounds. You so see a nice sticker system. So that's a big, that's a big fitting. It is. It is. So, boy, I'm holding about six inches, about a 60 pound one arm curl, which I don't know if I can do. So, if you're trying to pull this thing off, this is what we recommend. You would clamp this in a vise. 
Okay. This is kind of a Hollywood yeah. device. Yeah, <laughs> a whole device. <laughs> this is a, a fake vice here for our, our camera. So here, I'm grabbing and I'm turning counterclockwise. Ah, and that's going to break it free. So the lever here, look what do I got, right? I got a couple of feet, yeah. so that, that's going to help. So let's see how this, this comes off. There we are. That's a free hub. That's where all the cassettes go down. Inside's a little spacer. And this is replaceable. This part here is available. Now, when would you do that? You'd really have to thrash your hub. A lot of grit inside. Uh, and, and, well, really almost too much coasting. Yeah. I Well, I mean, the symptom would be uh, there's the ratcheting mechanism is in here. Mm -hmm. So when you're pedaling forward, if you're not moving forward, this thing is done and right. it needs to be replaced. We can so. see it catch and yep. catch and catch. Yep. If you pedal and it takes a quarter turn and then it catches, you got some toast. Yep. Toast. Uh, there is a way that the factory assembles these. There are no serviceable parts inside. Another interesting thing, a lot of people think, oh, I need to grease. I need to get grease inside of there. No. No, no, it's that can interfere up. with yeah. the ratcheting yeah. mechanism. There are yeah. very, very light, gentle poles in, inside. So um, that is the, uh, the free hub. We'll just put that out of, out of the way. So I believe I need some more drawing, but I think we're ready to start All right. back together. Ready so to throw it together. Uh, you're on the drive side. Those are the loose ones. Oh yeah, yeah, let's, can we get a close up here? Scott, on the camera, run on the camera. Alex, run on the computer. The unseen crew, behind the scenes crew here. Those ball bearings look nice and shiny. That's good. Uh, people say, oh yeah, you gotta replace the bearings. Well, these are the toughest, hardest thing in the entire system. If they've cleaned, if they look good, they're fine. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, by the time the cones, if this cone were wore out, uh, it, it's going to wear out before the bearings, and then the cups would wear out before the bearings. So those are really the toughest, the toughest things. Yeah, one thing we didn't touch on, Calvin, if, if, if I were to open this up and everything looks good, but the cup is bad, mm. what are you looking at there? Let's look, let's look at enjoying lacing and building a new wheel. Okay, so if the cups are, this is a, a pressed in piece of the hub, so if those are uh, looking damaged, then it's a new wheel. For, right, for, that's for right. And it's common to see the damage is gonna show up first on the cones. Mm -hmm. And we can look at the diameter where this is ball bearings turning around here. It's gonna see a, a lot more action yeah, well, or um, yeah. uh, wear compared to the larger circle down in, inside. So the cones typically are the first, first thing of the system to go. To, to, yeah. to go. So, um, so I think we're wiped out here, we're, we're clean. Can you, uh, you you're gonna start, start the re, repacking, okay. right? You hand me that grease and we'll get to work. Uh, okay, he's gonna go with the uh, H, HP, HPG1. And I've got here the, uh, the PPL, so. Okay, there you go, and you've got the ball bearings there. So he's going to lay in a bed, a nice bed of grease here. Yeah, squeeze that. Now go. Make sure we prime the pump. <laughs> yeah. So the cake frosting is going in. So certainly there are, there are different grease options, and we, we now have, have two. Uh, the PPL1 is called a poly, the Park Polylube. Our traditional grease, a very good ball bearing grease. Um, so he's going to pack those up. This tends to be a little bit heavier, heavier grease, the, the, the PPL. It is actually, a, a, I don't want to say better grease, but it's an easier grease. This is a thicker grease. It makes packing stuff up. Uh, faster because it's going to hold the ball bearings. Well, what's, what's, that's good. That's good for shops and assembly. It's kind of nice. It is also going to be a slower grease. The HPG is a lighter viscosity. It's a faster 
the HPG, it's a lighter viscosity grease. So uh, definitely differences in, in, uh, in grease. So even though it's a little trickier, ball bearings don't stay as tight in there. They can fall down easier. Which I'm experiencing which, which, right now. <laughs> that's right. You need some more, HP, a little yeah, more, uh, little more frosting. Okay. Greases, of course, largely um, lubricate from the oil that's inside of them, the types of, of oils. They're, they're put inside uh, soaps or surfactants that, that hold them in place, but basically it's going to be a, a, the blob of grease is, is giving oil and lubrication over a long, long period of, of, of time. So he's going in there. Very, very good. So I'll tell you what, while he's looking at that, we should look at this axle. This is the, uh, this is Ben's axle. We're, gonna, we're going to use this. But this axle, yeah, okay. <laughs> this is the, the new axle. It looks like that's a separate cone. And this actually uh, tricked me for a little bit. This is not a screwed on cone. We walk at the manufacturing processes here. The axle, we can feel inside, there's no lip. This cone surface and these wrench flats are machined out of the same piece of steel. So that's, that's interesting. If this cone were to be bad, it's a new axle. It's a new axle. Uh, and additionally, yeah, let's go, yeah, let's go with, um, uh, you are right. Let's not do the axle just yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, Phil, Phil is going to throw the seal on. So on, on an axle here, there we are. So the seal's in place. Let's flip. Let's give that a flip. And he's going to go with... with the other side, and here's our, our, our bearings. We don't want to be shy with the, with the grease here. There was some more yumminess on, on top of there. I've got some questions for you, Kelly, on the, on the subject. Good. Of, uh, somebody wants to know, why a retainer on one side and loose bearings on the other side? Uh, retainers, you're commonly going to see. Uh, you're going to see a retainer simply for manufacturing uh, um, uh, speed. It's a retainer. All the bearings are together. You can just drop them in quickly. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure why they didn't. They could have done a, 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 a retainer on, on both sides. So I'll, there we go. So he's, we have our axle in. Should we re, replay that for our viewing audience? So uh, this, this, came, this seal went on here. It's a nice little trick here. If you run our finger, Run your finger right around there. Does it feel the same height? I think we're a little bit high. Yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah, right, right yeah, here. Yeah. So you can feel yeah. it's a little push. Maybe we'll hand me that tire lever. That's there a, we a go. dull edge here. Right, just a gentle, gentle push. Yep. And that the height there, I'm going to continue on with the retainer uh, question here. <laughs> but I want to do this while we're uh, if the seal is up too high, our cone's going to be hitting it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be giving us a false sense of the bearing. So here's the, the cone. And um, still on the retainer question. Uh, the Greek, when you put the new axle through, you catch some grease, which is nice, because our threads are yep. now yep. greased. So anyway, a retainer generally is used to speed assembly. It just makes things go together faster and nicer. So we're going we're gonna to thread that down. And then comes the cone. And the cone's going to be held, and it's part of our bearing adjustment. This is now the, the, uh, the interesting part here. We want this axle to turn uh, smoothly. All right, That's how mechanics say, oh, your axle's turning rough. Um, we say that because we're standing on a bench turning the axle. But you know what? When you ride your bike, your axle ain't turning. 
the wheel is turning around your axle, so it's, it's a little, little bit relative. So here's our, 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 our nut there. Very good, very, very good. So uh, let's, see what, let's see what we get here. Look at that, All looks right. like we're better. Now I'm gonna, whoa, I think it, I'm not getting that tick, tick, tick. I think we've done a lot better. So how smooth, how smooth should that be, right? Generally, uh, I mean, you just want the, the wheel to spin freely. Uh, mm -hmm. And usually when you adjust a hub, you adjust it with a little bit of play in the hub and the axle system will compress the bearings the rest of the way. Very small amount of play. Sometimes you That's might right. not even feel it if you don't know what you're feeling for. Exactly, so. It's exactly right. For the traditional threaded, these small threaded axles, absolutely. This baby, she ain't compressing. Right. So when these are put in the bike, when we, we say a, a quickly skewer, this is really not a skewer to cam it down tight. We're simply turning this down on the frame that's pushing the frame against this nut. So we're not really looking for any play in this system here. So yep. let's go ahead and, and flip that and in here. We're gonna adjust over here. You don't have to have an axle, axle vise, but it does make it fun. So you can see we're securing the fixed side and we're gonna take some, some wrenches here. So yeah, we want it to be, it's, it's almost our, our good friend Goldilocks. <laughs> we want it uh, not too tight, not too loose. So I'm gonna back up that cone. If I come down gentle, 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 I can feel it touch. It yeah, you feel it begin to preload the bearings. I'm touching those yeah. the bearings, right? So I'm gonna, gonna hold right there. I'm gonna, before I tighten this, I'm actually gonna back off maybe an eighth of a turn now you do get this play a little bit. When I tighten this nut on the top, the lock nut, it's gonna push the threads down a skosh. There's play in threads, a skosh as we say. Uh, so I'm holding the lower and I'm tightening the upper and I'm gonna see how that, that feels. So, ooh, what do you th how, how did I do there? What, what do you think there? Turn, turn give that a turn. It feels a little tight. It feels terrible. It feels terrible. <laughs> this is also, if it's too tight, notice. Hey, what? Do, I'm turning the free turning hub. Turning the free hub. Turning yeah. the, no, no. So this is definitely, if you're over tight with the adjustment, it is, uh, it is messing up the free hub. So even though I came back, the top nut is, is taking the thread play, the thread backlash mm -hmm. and pushing it down. So. I'm gonna back up another goodly amount. Okay, so we had, what, I'm, what am I doing there? Why, what am I doing here, man? Why do I, why do I grab here? You're checking for play at the outside of the wheel because you know, yep. it magnifies what's going on That's in the right. hub. That's right, and yeah. I actually don't feel anything. So we, I'm trying to get the pop of air here. Okay. <laughs> okay. First it was too tight. Click, 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 click. So viewing audience, this is kind of tricky for you to, uh, to see. Um, you have to feel it more. You can hear can it. Can you hear you can that hear there? Play. Get your mic very close. Play, bearing play. Wheel's gonna be moving, the rotor's gonna be moving. Yep. Does it feel smoother? Oh yes, it's Always smoother, nice. but not, not appropriate. So now, where is she? <laughs> so what, what, let's define, let's define Goldilocks. It's not just too tight or too loose. We really want this thing as loose as we can get away with. Yep. No play, without play. Mm -hmm. So if I was here, I'm gonna come in, maybe just a spokes worth, just a little bit. 30 seconds of a turn. I'm gonna hold and secure. And I'm checking for play. None. Now, that's probably where we're at. We're good, we're good. 
And if you don't have the axle vise and you want to test it, simply put it back in a, in a bike and the bike will act as the, uh, axle the check. Yeah. Uh, so again, to summarize, what you see here is what you get. The, the bearing, there's no more gritty gritty. That's nice. Um, it's not going to change and we put this one in, in the bike. So that's your basic uh, cup and cone overhaul. So, Alex? Yeah, um, we have a few questions from YouTube and Facebook. One guy wants to know, is it best practice to remove the cage, the, the uh, retainer, I'm, I'm guessing, and add one extra ball for minimal friction? No, no, you, uh, add, I would say adding ball bearings in for minimal friction. First, you're assuming it would, uh, um, it would take an extra ball bearing. Right. What you're getting with an extra ball bearing is spreading out the load. Mm -hmm. Yep. So overall, increase in durability in the system, uh, but not necessarily exactly. less friction. That's or, right. That's or maybe more friction actually. Uh, if you're it would be. And that I was going to say another uh, old mechanic mm -hmm. trick. Mm -hmm. Not that I know any old mechanic, but you see this in our Euro friends removing a ball bearing yeah. for the yeah. same uh, theory. Yeah. So, but no, I would not change the number. But very good question. Mm -hmm. Have loose ball bearings? Can you use a retainer? Uh, if you, if <laughs> in theory, but you'll never find one. If yeah. it had loose bearings uh, uh, on this model, this is an SLX, and they made a retainer for it, right. you could. But yeah. it has to be the right diameter that holds the right size balls and the right number. number. Yeah. So if it if it ain't there, you're not using it. Yeah. Um, but on, on on headsets. That's another day. Yeah. We'll talk, we'll about, talk about that. Cup and cone on, on a headset. Yeah. Then you can get away with stuff. Yeah. So, okay. So, again, it is the day to get to the gas station. <laughs> get, get roses. Roses and chocolate. Again, get gas. yourself home and then overhaul the overhaul hubs. Your hubs. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Tech Talks. Goodbye.